Hey, I'm Adam Jusko from ProudMoney.com. In this video, we're going to do an updated review of the Chase Sapphire Preferred card. There have been some changes to the card. So we're going to talk about those and then do sort of a bigger review of the card in general for anybody that is sort of coming to this card for the first time. But before we do that, I would ask you to please subscribe to this YouTube channel if you have not already. And if you have already, I thank you for doing so. So Chase has made some changes to the Chase Sapphire Preferred card. Namely, they have increased the upfront bonus on the card, but also increased the annual fee structure on the card as well. So specifically what they've done is they are now offering a 60,000 point bonus to new card holders if you spend $4,000 within the first three months of having the card. At the same time, they have instituted a $95 annual fee in that first year, as well as every year afterwards. Previously, this card gave a 50,000 point uh, bonus if you spent those 4,000 bucks in the first three months, but it waived that $95 annual fee in the first year. So you could get that 50,000 point bonus, but not pay any annual fee for the first 12 months you had the card. So you used to sort of have the option to try and, you know, sort of uh, uh, weasel out of this card after getting that bonus uh, without paying the annual fee if you really uh, wanted to. Now you really don't have that option because you're going to get a bigger bonus, but you are going to pay that annual fee right up front. So you're getting a 10,000 point, um, 10,000 points more than you would have under the old bonus situation, but you're going to pay $95 for them. So essentially those 10,000 points at the very least are going to be worth $100 in rewards. Uh, they could also be worth as much as $125 or even conceivably uh, more than that, which we'll talk about in a minute. So from my point of view, it's, uh, you know, it's sort of a wash unless you are someone that would think of getting this card and then, you know, getting the bonus and, you know, sort of getting out under the old uh, structure of the card. So anyway, that is what the difference is from today versus yesterday. Now, I should also say here that the Chase Sapphire Preferred card with that 60,000 point bonus is actually offering a bonus that is as good as or better than the Chase Sapphire Reserve, which is its more well-known big brother or big sister, however you might want to uh, think about it, that has the big $450 annual fee. So this is sort of interesting here. You can at least get the same bonus uh, with this card. You might even get more depending on how you redeem. And just br briefly to tell you what I mean by that, at 60,000 points, uh, here with the Chase Sapphire Preferred, when you redeem them, you could redeem them for cash back and they would be a worth a penny a point. So those 60,000 points would be worth $600 in that case. If you redeem them for travel through the Chase Ultimate Rewards Portal, Chase gives you a 25% boost on those points, which means that those points could then be worth as much as $750 in travel when redeemed that way. Now the Chase Sapphire Reserve, the card with the big uh, $450 annual fee, has a 50,000 point bonus, which obviously is 10,000 points less, but the redemptions are different. You could either redeem it for cash, which would be the same uh, penny a point, so it would only be worth $500, that bonus in that case, but the Chase Sapphire Reserve gives a 50% boost when you redeem its points through the Chase Ultimate Rewards portal. So in that case, it would be worth $750, the bonus on that card. So when I say the Chase Sapphire Preferred has a, uh, you know, is as good or better in terms of that bonus, that's because if you redeemed it as cash, you'd actually get 100 bucks more than you would be if you redeemed that 50,000 point bonus from the Chase Sapphire Reserve for cash. If you used either of them for travel through the Chase Ultimate Rewards Portal, you'd get that same $750 uh, worth of travel. So long story short, it is a nice bonus. We like the uh, changes for most potential new card holders. All right, so now let's kind of start over and do a sort of full review of the Chase Sapphire Preferred card for anybody that may be new to the card and doesn't really know uh, what all the features are of it. So you can you know make your decision on that as well. So the Chase Sapphire Preferred card is a card that uh, we like in particular for people that are maybe new to the idea of earning travel rewards. Uh, sort of a beginner travel card. It is uh, very good in that respect. And the reason is it has sort of a you know nominal annual fee, but it has that nice uh, bonus up front 
that you can get. And it also has a lot of flexibility in how you can use your points. So if you're someone that is not totally sure, uh, you know, sort of on what you're doing in terms of getting credit card points and how to use them, this is a card that gives you a lot of different options. So you're probably not going to end up in a space where you suddenly, you know, have points or miles or whatever, and, you know, you wish that you had, uh, you know, done things differently down the road. You're not going to be unhappy with this card. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it is the very best travel credit card, but it, we think it is a very good travel credit card for beginners because of the fact that flexibility means you probably aren't going to have any regrets about getting it, even if it doesn't necessarily maximize every single dollar that you might spend on the credit card. So, as I mentioned, the card has a $95 annual fee, and if you spend at least four thousand bucks, you're in those first three months, you're going to get that sixty thousand uh, point bonus that is worth at least six hundred bucks if you um, uh, redeem it for cash, or it could be worth at least as much as seven fifty if redeemed through the Chase Ultimate Rewards portal because you are getting a twenty five percent boost on those points when you redeem through the Chase Ultimate Rewards portal. So that's the bonus. Now, in terms of the everyday rewards on the card, you are going to get two ultimate rewards uh, points for every dollar that you spend with this card on travel purchases and with dining purchases. You're going to get one point per dollar on everything else that you buy uh, with the card. Now, when you redeem, you have multiple choices, which goes back to what I said uh, about the flexibility. Number one, you can redeem for cash at a penny per point, which means if you have 10,000 points, it would be worth $100. You can redeem through the Chase Ultimate Rewards portal, in which case you get a 25% boost on your earnings. So in that case, 10,000 points would equal $125 when used through the Chase Ultimate Rewards portal. And then you also have a third choice, which is actually a very uh, attractive choice that I haven't gotten to yet, and that is the fact that you can take your points and you can transfer them on a one-to-one -one basis into a number of uh, nice travel partner programs, frequent flyer uh, programs and hotel programs, including Southwest, United, Hyatt, Marriott, and then there are, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe like five, six, seven other ones as well that you can uh, that you can transfer your points into. So I think Chase has probably the best travel partners of any of the cards. That's at least uh, my opinion. I think that would be especially true for someone, again, who is maybe a big beginner and wants some flexibility. Uh, I think Chase has the, uh, uh, the biggest range of potential travel partners in terms of having you know, two major airlines, two major hotel programs, uh, you know, depending on how you think of these uh, airlines and hotels, you might even say that there are more major airlines and hotels. But between Southwest, United, Marriott, and Hyatt, I would say that those are, uh, you know, those are all big names that if you are sort of new to earning travel points, that could be attractive for you to be able to transfer your points on a one-to-one -one basis into those programs, especially if you have earned points already in any of those uh, programs or with Chase's other travel partners. So that's sort of the core of the uh, the Chase Sapphire Preferred card. There are also some other features. There's uh, no foreign transaction fees on this card. It also has uh, some, you know, decent travel insurances. If there's something that, um, you know, goes wrong on any trip that you might take, which you have, you know, if you have purchased your travel using the Chase Sapphire Preferred card. Now, while the Chase Sapphire Preferred card is an excellent card in that uh, first year with that big bonus, and of course, like I said, the flexibility, it's good for new travelers. After you get past that first year, it becomes maybe a little more questionable. First off, if you, you know, have a year under your belt of having used the card and, you know, you now kind of understand a little bit more how to use your points and all that sort of thing, you may be, uh, you know, thinking about branching out. And in that second year, you're no longer going to get that big bonus. So essentially what you're getting is you're paying a $95 annual fee for a card that is giving you two points per dollar on travel and dining, one point per dollar on everything else. There are other cards on the market that don't even have an annual fee where you could do at least as well as that on points. Even if you considered that 25% boost and you thought of those uh, points as being 2.5 points on travel and dining and 1.25 uh, on everything else, you still could find other cards on the market that would probably beat this card. Now, if you left this card, 
you would also, uh, you know, if you didn't have other chase cards, you'd be leaving the uh, potential to use your points and transferring them into, you know, those sort of attractive travel partners, uh, you know, but maybe it would be, you know, on balance, something where you would consider having, uh, you know, considering that you were going to move on from this card because there were other cards on the market and you feel more, feel a little more comfortable, you know, that you know what you're doing and whatever. So maybe you're looking around. Now, when you do reach year two, before you make that step of, you know, looking or uh, at least considering to, you know, jumping out of this card, you should also think of a, uh, another potential structure, I guess you could say, uh, that some people use to get even more value out of this card. And what that is, is essentially using multiple Chase credit cards uh, to sort of get a synergy that gives you more from those cards combined than you could get from those cards individually. And what I mean by that is, say you have the Chase Sapphire Preferred card with its uh, you know, points on travel and dining, and you've got the 25% uh, boost. Now what Chase will do is they will let you combine points from this card with other cards. I should even say more so bringing points in from other Chase cards into this account and still getting that 25% boost on those. So you could conceivably get other Chase cards that give you points in different categories or give you more points on your purchases, then pull those points into this card and redeem them with that 25% boost and make those points worth more than they were originally. Now, a common way that people do this is they might get the Chase Freedom and the Chase uh, Freedom Unlimited card. The Chase Freedom card is a card that gives you five points per dollar on certain uh, categories of purchases and those purchase categories change every three months. So, you know, in the first three months of the year, you might have, I don't know, gas and groceries. In the second three months of the year, you might have home improvement stores and whatever else. Uh, every three months, those are going to change. So you're going to get five points per dollar when you make purchases in those certain categories. So that's the Chase Freedom card. Now, you also have the Chase Freedom Unlimited card, which gives you 1.5 points on everything that you buy. So if you think about having the Chase Sapphire Preferred, the Chase Freedom, and the Chase Freedom Unlimited, in that case, what you end up doing is you're getting your two points per dollar on travel and dining. You're getting your five points per dollar, uh, you know, on those categories that change each quarter. And you would be getting 1.5 uh, points per dollar on anything else that you bought if you were, you know, willing to sort of juggle those three cards and almost think of them as one card. So then when you had all those points, you could bring the points from the other two cards into your Chase Sapphire preferred account, and then you could redeem them all together and get that 25% boost on those points when you use them through the uh, Chase Ultimate Rewards travel portal, which is run by Expedia. So it's essentially, uh, you know, the same kind of idea as using an Expedia or one of those sort of uh, travel competitors. So uh, a lot of people like to do this sort of thing. The common name for this when you get three chase cards is the chase trifecta you don't have to get three cards you could get only two cards you could even you know potentially get four cards if chase would let you have them and combine the uh combine the points in that way but this is sort of a common thing that uh you know some people know to do and it is a way to like i said maximize those points get more from them uh you know as a uh you know sort of lineup of cards than you would from any of those cards individually. A lot of people like to do the what they call the Chase Trifecta with the Chase Sapphire Reserve because that card actually gives a 50% boost when you redeem your uh, points through the Ultimate Rewards portal. So obviously, if you could combine it with that card, you'd get even more. But we're not going to go too far into that because obviously we're talking about this card uh, with the lower annual fee uh, versus that card that has the higher annual fee and very uh, different features. And so anyway, I have talked about the uh, Chase Trifecta in another video, which I will link to below and in one of these corners, however, that uh, will play out <laughs> and you can go and check that video out uh, at your leisure. But overall, the Chase Sapphire Preferred, like I said, a very nice card 
for a sort of beginner in the uh, travel space in terms of earning travel rewards with a lot of flexibility, a nice bonus, a uh, you know moderate annual fee. I think most people would be happy with this uh, with this card if they haven't earned travel rewards before after that first year. Like I said, it's a little less clear as to whether this card is a keeper, but uh, you know, definitely a good place to start. So that's it for this video. As always, I thank you for watching. And as always, I would say, please go to proudmoney.com where we do credit card reviews and have personal finance news and talk about finance deals and all sorts of other fun stuff too. Thanks for watching. Bye.